Now let's take a look at some deformation and rigging tools. We're gonna to start off with the tension deformer. And what this does is it allows you to control how vertices deform. So best way to look at it is just to show you. So I've got this kind of capsule shape here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just select this vertex at the top and then use my greater than sign to grow it to about this size. And then I'm going to go into deform, tension, and then select my options. Now there's really not a lot of options. One is the number of smoothing iterations, and it's best to keep that at 10 for now. We can certainly increase or decrease it. And then smoothing step, how much will it smooth? And then there's also an envelope, which basically is kind of like a fall off. Now the other one is pin border vertices. Now anything along this edge here will be what's called pinned and they will not deform. And that's one of the nice features of this tension deformer. So let's go ahead and create this and see what happens. Well, when I create it, my selection goes away, but if I go into my attribute editor and go into object mode here and select this, you'll see I do have a tension node. So let's take a look at how this works. Now the tension deformer does not give you a handle like a cluster controller would. Instead, it basically affects all of the vertices that we had selected. So if I were to go back into vertex mode, select this vertex here, maybe grow it once or twice just to get the top, you can see that when I move these, we get a nice stretchy, squashy effect. But notice how when I bring this down, these edge vertices are what we call pinned. So if I were to expand this selection again, it would affect it. But again, this part of the object remains solid. Now we can control the tension if we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe move my selection down by hitting less than, and let's go over to tension here. So I'm gonna just move this up and let's take a look at some of these. One is inward and outward constraint. And so what these do is control how much of this is affecting neighboring vertices. The other one is squash constraint. And so this works when you start to squash the mesh. And we're not really squashing this particular mesh, but we are stretching it. So the stretch constraint basically is your fall off for this type of action. So as you can see, as stretch goes up, you get more fall off and that works on both sides. Now we also have what's called shear and bend strength and that's for when you move the vertices over. You can move these to affect how it shears and bends. And then we can also pin or unpin the border vertices. So if I unpin them, you'll see it starts to affect them a little bit more. Now this can be used as a deformation tool, but I also like to use it as a modeling tool because what it does is it really allows you to sculpt or move stuff around on a mesh but still maintain that border. And I really like this pin border vertices to create an edge for the effect.